And we are back, people. It's Wake Up Nigeria, of course. It's time for our relationship segment. And today, we are discussing a very, very pertinent issue that every, well, a lot of people can relate with. And doing justice to that is BC Folari. And uh, we will be talking about domestic violence. Ola BC Folari is a professional counselor and a certified relationship and marriage coach with two decades of experience to her name. She's also the founder and head of faculty at Threefold Court Marriage Academy. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for being here. I love your red, very proper. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's talk about domestic violence. We've, we've, we see it all around us. Some of us even experienced it growing up. Now let's talk about the three major aspects of domestic violence that you would like to touch on quickly. Okay, um, let me touch on awareness and prevention together. I would like to start with the singles because when we talk about these things, we don't go back to the roots. There's always a beginning. So for the singles, first off, um, I think your whole senses should be awake when you're in a relationship. So what I, what I mean by that is the signs are always there. People say, but I didn't see that. It's not quite true. But your senses need to be engaged, your five senses. Yeah, but uh, it's difficult, to mm. be honest, because like they say, love is blind. Mm. And it actually plays a very, if not, you know, very critical role, especially in that, you know, first stage or in the first stage of the relationship. So... Um, from definite, let's first of all define what domestic violence is so that people get a clear perspective of what it is. Does it come in like different um, um, areas as well, like in different, like emotional, does it also involve emotional violence and uh, apart from physical abuse? Definitely. So let's define what it is and then we'll take it so away. Anything that, you know, disrupts your well-being, okay. you know, in a domestic setting, either mentally, emotionally, physically, it's, it's an, a form of abuse. abuse okay. So it's not just physical, even though I want to drill it down to physical. There's okay. emotional abuse. There's financial abuse as well. There's mental, there's emotional, yes. Okay. There is. So as I was saying, for the singles, you were saying you didn't quite agree. I can understand, but you know, you said love is blind. Maybe I don't quite agree. What happens is you, we get our emotions be clouded by things like sex. That's why they would, those of the faith based would advise you don't. Because what that does is, and an hormone is released when you do that, that just keeps you bonded and glued to that person you go past their faults you know your, your brain sh you know short circuits that part of it that's what oxytocin does so that's why they advise against that in marriage you need your oxytocin to be able to you know be blind to their faults because you've accepted them already okay so you don't need it in a relationship but you need it when you're married yes I, I, as in before because you can't make sound judgment when i say your five senses should be allowed you pick signals somebody who is always controlling they are already trying to alienate you from your family members. Why are you so close? I don't think I want you to be getting, we won't be having that kind of proximity yeah, to your family members. Somebody who has experienced that for the major part of their life may not understand that it's a problem or it's not normal. As a single or as a married? As a single person. Hmm. Seeing that growing up, you feel they might not understand that is a problem. Exactly. Problem. That's where our um, awareness is key. And apart from you, having your senses all alert and looking out for the signals of the single. You also want to make sure that if you're in a relationship with somebody, the church counseling is not the first point of contact you should have with counseling. Always speak with a professional counselor before okay. the church counseling. Okay. I always say that. You know why? Some of those um, people don't have any business making it to the church stage, mm. the church counseling stage. If you have seen an independent professional counselor, you know, some of the things, they don't know you, they're not sentimental towards you, they just... You know, Same advice you based on the, yeah. um, the, the, they tell you based on the facts before them mm. and they leave you to make the choices. They show you the pros and the cons. So if a lot of people actually engage in the service of professional counsellors before the church counselling, what we find out at the church counselling stage is um, a lot of assurance has been bought. Parents are involved. So even when they are seeing it and you're trying to show them, it's they biased. want to excuse it and like, oh, we'll work it out, we'll pray about it. So those are some of the things that actually escalate in marriage. What you see will always... Um, any traits you see, most likely marriage will amplify them. Do you understand? Not necessarily erase them. Yeah, okay. yeah, so that's for the single. Now for, for the right. married stage, I want to say um, one of the ways we can create awareness is with our parents as well. This age-long tradition of you don't have a home in my house after you get married, I think that's it's it. about time to be abolished. Mm. Would you rather your child be brought in a body bag to you or you would you know, accept them for a while while they sort out their issues? So those are some of the reasons why women also remain. There's just nowhere 
to go to for, I mean, I know men are also abused, but talking about the women now, mm. those are one of the fundamental reasons. They probably don't have anywhere to go. They're not financial, some not are not financially, financially empowered enough, yeah. enough to. So I think parents and society will help as well. Don't castigate people. Not everybody went into marriage with the intention of getting out back. Mm. You understand? And then we've seen, there's also the case of unwanted pregnancies before marriage, you understand? The guy probably doesn't even know what he's doing. He's probably an abuser. Mm. And you're saying, sorry, oh. You've gotten pregnant, go and marry. Those are the things, those are the kind of people that get married sometimes, and then we are shocked that abuse is happening. So yeah. those are part of the awareness. Society is pretty much needs to be involved, especially our parents' generation. This idea of you don't have a room, you're telling them, don't do that, don't do that. I mean, I think, I personally believe that parenting is, is for life. So now that you have touched on awareness, now let's look into prevention. How do you prevent domestic violence if you're faced with it, especially oh. if you're a victim? Well, if you're already a victim, first things to do is um, remove yourself from the environment of harm. Marriage is not meant to um, bruise you. You're supposed to be better in marriage. Two should be better than one. Okay. So marriage should make you, not mar you. If you're being threatened or you're experiencing physical violence, the first thing to do is to remove yourself from the harmful environment. If we were abroad, I'm not so sure how rigid those laws are. But if you're abroad and you report to the police, they actually escort you there yes. with a restraining in order. order. Yeah. They actually they ask you if there's somewhere you can stay. Mm -hmm. They want to be sure and they serve the restraining order to that party. So right now, I don't know how, you know, how strong our laws here in Nigeria, but you can escalate. When you're being beaten, you don't stay there and keep quiet. You escalate and make sure you are removed from the environment. It can still be resolved, but yeah. please, um, only, only living people can reconcile. So the first thing right. is life. All right. So the thing is, um, domestic violence is, um, there is not enough time Definitely to not. discuss it. Because we, I mean, there's so, there's so many the areas of, of domestic issues. violence that we need to discuss. And just this little time is not enough to address it. I believe that we will discuss this. We'll touch on intervention next week. Okay. on the same topic okay. on domestic violence. But thank you so much, Olabisi Fanari. It's always a pleasure having you here. You. And um, yes, you, are also, you can also contact the Domestic and Sexual Response uh, Violence yes. Team here in Lagos if you are currently a victim of domestic violence or if you know anybody who's facing that. The numbers are on your screen, people. Do not miss out on that, please. Do not wait for things to escalate before you speak up and speak out and get out. And that's it on domestic violence related issues.